bovine mastitis costs the Canadian dairy industry hundreds of millions of dollars annually and is one of the main drivers of antibiotic use in the industry. Antibiotics are one of the main tools we currently have as producers to manage on-farm infections, which is important for ensuring animal health and welfare. However, with the rise of antibiotic resistance and concerns about human health, our access to these tools is becoming more controlled and limited. With more regulations and questions about proper use of antimicrobials in livestock production, the long-term sustainability of antimicrobial use is uncertain. Antibiotic resistance presents a critical challenge for animal health, but it doesn't stop there. Resistance also impacts human health when the medications we use to treat people no longer work on antimicrobial resistant bacteria. In 2019, it's estimated there were 4 million deaths caused by antimicrobial resistant infections that couldn't be treated. Research suggests that by 2050, this number will more than double causing nearly as many deaths as cancer, diabetes, road accidents, measles, cholera, and tetanus combined. And what is perhaps most important to understand is that any use of antimicrobials can lead to the development of resistance, not just inappropriate use. This makes it important to really question how, when, where, and why are we using antimicrobials? So, how do we begin to tackle this challenge? And what role do dairy farmers in the Canadian dairy industry have to play? Important work is being done on best practices to reduce antibiotic use, but we need many different types of options in our toolbox to address this complex and growing global threat. New and exciting work has been happening at McGill University in Canada, where researchers are trying to understand how the microbiome can help prevent mastitis and the need for antibiotics in the first place. The microbiome is the complex community of microorganisms that live and interact together, and they exist in all types of different environments in our world, from our oceans, soils, and rivers to human bodies and animals. It was previously thought that milk coming from the bovine teat was sterile, but with next-generation sequencing technologies, we now know that the udder is actually home to a rich microbial community made up of many different types of bacteria. These include commensal bacteria, which generally live in harmony with each other and do not cause inflammation. However, there can also be pathogenic bacteria present, which when allowed to grow can lead to inflammation and infection. There is a constant push and pull relationship happening between commensal and pathogenic bacteria in the udder. Simply put, when the pathogens win and are able to grow to high numbers, the commensal bacteria are overrun and an infection occurs. On the flip side, when the commensal bacteria win, the pathogens are kept in check at low numbers and an infection cannot take hold. In some cases, the pathogen can be controlled with no response from the cow's immune system. This ongoing research is working to identify which bacteria in the microbiome may be helpful in preventing pathogens such as Staphylococcus aureus, Escherichia coli, and Klebsiella pneumoniae from establishing in the udder. For instance, results have shown that udders colonized with Aerococcus urinaeaqui or Staphylococcus xylosis have a lower chance of contracting a mastitis infection caused by S. aureus. This has led researchers to hypothesize that by intentionally colonizing the udder with these protective bacteria, mastitis caused by S. aureus can be prevented, potentially eliminating the need for antibiotics entirely. The process of influencing the udder microbiome is called precision microbiome engineering, and its application can extend to other pathogens of interest as well. For example, Salmonella enterica cerevar Dublin, more commonly known as Salmonella Dublin, is an emerging bacterial pathogen that is of particular concern due to its broad resistance to antibiotics. However, precision microbiome engineering could present a way to prevent infections through colonizing the gastrointestinal tract of cattle with bacteria that are protective against S. Dublin. 
While more work is required to deepen the understanding of microbiome dynamics and how commensal bacteria can prevent certain infections, this research is expected to be some of the first to use precision engineering in an attempt to prevent specific infections and may be a helpful tool moving forward as we work to reduce antibiotic use and develop alternatives to address the growing threat of antimicrobial resistance.